The Mahdi Arabic, El -ma -hd -iso 233, Al Mahdi, literally, the guided one is an eschatological redeemer of Islam who will appear and rule for five, seven, nine or nineteen years according to differing interpretations before the Day of Judgment Yom al literally, the Day of Resurrection, and will rid the world of evil. There is no direct reference to the Mahdi in the Quran, only in the Ahadith the reports and traditions of Muhammad's teachings collected after his death. In most traditions, the Mahdi will arrive with Isa Jesus to defeat al-Masi ad-Dajjal literally, the false messiah or Antichrist. Although the concept of Ahmadi is not an essential doctrine in Sunni Islam, it is popular among both Sunni and Shia Muslims. Both agree that he will rule over the Muslims and establish justice, however, they differ extensively on his attributes and status. Throughout history, various individuals have claimed to be the Mahdi. These have included Muhammad Janpuri, founder of the Madhavia sect, the Bab Said Ali Muhammad, founder of Babism, Muhammad Ahmad, who established the Mahdist state in Sudan in the late 19th century, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, founder of the Ahmadiyya religion, Masood Rajavi, leader of the Mek, and Riyaz Ahmed Gohar Shahi, twelve Shia believe the Mahdi is Muhammad al-Mahdi. Historical development The term Mahdi does not occur in the Quran. It is derived from the Arabic root hdy Arabic, hdi commonly used to mean divine guidance. The term al-Mahdi was employed from the beginning of Islam, but only as an honorific epithet and without any messianic significance. As an honorific it has been used in some instances to describe Muhammad by Hassan ibn Thabit, as well as Abraham, al hussein and various Umayyad rulers during the Second Civil War 680 after the death of Mu'awiyyah, the term acquired a new meaning of a ruler who would restore Islam to its perfect form and restore justice after oppression. In Kufa during the rebellion in 680s, al-Mukhtar proclaimed Muhammad al-Hanafiyah as the Mahdi in this heightened sense. Among the Umayyads, Sulayman encouraged the belief that he was the Mahdi, and other Umayyad rulers, like Umar II, have been addressed as such in the panegyrics of Jarir and al farizdaq Early discussions about the identity of al-Mahdi by religious scholars can be traced back to the time after the Second Fitna. These discussions developed in different directions and were influenced by traditions hadiths attributed to Muhammad. In Umayyad times, scholars and traditionists not only differed on which caliph or rebel leader should be designated as Mahdi, but also on whether the Mahdi is a messianic figure and if signs and predictions of his time have been satisfied. By the time of the Abbasid revolution in the year 750, Mahdi was already a known concept. Evidence shows that the first Abbasid caliph as Safa assumed the title of the Mahdi. For himself, in Shia Islam, it seems likely that the attribution of messianic qualities to the Mahdi originated from two of the groups supporting al Hanafiyyah, southern Arabian settlers and local recent converts in Iraq. They became known as Qaysanites, and introduced what later became two key aspects of the Shia's concept of the Mahdi. The first was the notion of return of the dead, particularly of the Imams. The second was that after al Hanafiyyah's death, they believed he was, in fact, in hiding in the Razwa Mountains near Medina. This later developed into the doctrine known as the occultation. The Mahdi appeared in early Shiite narratives, spread widely among Shiite groups and became dissociated from its historical figure, Muhammad al hanafiya During the 10th century, based on these earlier beliefs, the doctrine of Mahdism was extensively expanded by al Kulaini, Ibrahim al-Kumi and Ibn Babawai. In particular, in the early 10th century, the doctrine of the occultation, which declares that the twelfth Imam did not die but was concealed by God from the eyes of men, was expounded. The Mahdi became synonymous with the hidden Imam, who was thought to be in occultation awaiting the time that God has ordered for his return. This return is envisaged as occurring shortly before the final day of judgment. In fact, the concept of the hidden Imam was attributed to several imams in turn. Some historians suggest that the term itself was probably introduced into Islam by southern Arabian tribes who had settled in Syria in the mid 7th century. They believed that the Mahdi would lead them back to their homeland and re establish the Himyarite kingdom. They also believed that he would eventually conquer Constantinople. It has also been suggested that the concept of the Mahdi may have been derived from Messianic Judeo Christian beliefs. Accordingly, traditions were introduced to support certain political interests, especially anti-Abbasid sentiments. 
These traditions about the Mahdi appeared only at later times in hadith collections such as Jamie at Termidi and Sunan Abi Dawud, but are absent from the early works of Bukhari and Muslim. Topic: <laughs> Sunni Islam. Since Sunnism has no established doctrine of Mahdi, compositions of Mahdi varies among Sunni scholars. While some scholars like Ibn Khaldun even disputed the authenticity of references concerning the Mahdi in Hadith literature, others like Ibn Kathir elaborated a whole apocalyptic scenario which included prophecies about Mahdi, Jesus and Dajjal during the end time. Some Sunni beliefs deny the Mahdi as a separate figure, accordingly Jesus will fulfill this role and judge over mankind, thus Mahdi is considered as a title for Jesus, when he returns. However the more common opinion among Sunni Muslims is, that the Mahdi is an expected ruler sent by God before the end time to re-establish righteousness, coincides with the second coming of Jesus Christ Isa. but, unlike most Shia traditions, Sunni Islam often do not believe the Mahdi has already been born, but there is a group of Sunni famous scholars who mentioned that Mahdi has already been born, such as al-Dahabi, Ibn Hajar, Abu al-Fala Hanbali, al-Kunduzi and so on. Meanwhile, Sheikh Najm al-Din al-Askari in his book named 40 of Sunni scholars who mentioned that Mahdi has already been born. Sunnis in general reject the Twelver Shiite principle of the Mahdi's occultation. Sunnis do, however, rely on traditionally canonical collections of narrations for derivations of the Mahdi's attributes and lineage. According to Sunan Abi Dawud, one of the six canonical books of Hadith in Sunni Islam, narrated by Umm Salama, the Prophet said, the Mahdi will be of my family, of the descendants of Fatima. In heavy contrast with Shia Islam, Sunnis have a much more human view of the Mahdi, who they believe will be nothing less than the most rightly guided Muslim of his time. He will be rectified in a single night which is taken to mean that the provisions for his leadership and rule will be made in a single night. According to Sunan ibn Majah, one of the six canonical collections of Hadith, narrated by Ali, Mahdi is one of us, the people of the household. Allah will rectify him in a single night. Whereas much of the Shiite belief ascribes divine faculties in some circles of Shiite Islam, it is even believed that the Mahdi can mentally control the wind and vegetation by God's permission and transcendent status to the Mahdi. Sunnis believe he will be altogether human but will have sagacity, especially as it pertains to leading other people and ruling a nation. Sunnis believe he will rise and be recognized by his continued philanthropy, charity, piety, facial features, name, and sense of justice, not through direct divine intervention. It is not unreasonable to suspect, based on these narrations, that the Mahdi may not be known to the people immediately, even after being born and living for quite some time without the title of Mahdi, hence, being rectified by God. According to Sunan Abi Dawud. The Prophet said, the Mahdi will be of my stock, and will have a broad forehead and a prominent nose. He will fill the earth with equity and justice as it was filled with oppression and tyranny, and he will rule for seven years. <laughs> References interpreted in a hadith The Mahdi is frequently mentioned in Sunni hadith as establishing the caliphate. Among Sunnis, some believe the Mahdi will be an ordinary man. The following Sunni hadith make references to the Mahdi. Muhammad is quoted as saying about the Mahdi, his name will be my name, and his father's name my father's name. Even if the entire duration of the world's existence has already been exhausted and only one day is left before doomsday, Allah will expand that day to such length of time as to accommodate the kingdom of a person from my Alul Bayt who will be called by my name. He will fill out the earth with peace and justice as it will have been full of injustice and tyranny by then. Umm Salama, a wife of Muhammad, is quoted as saying that, his the Mahdi's aim is to establish a moral system from which all superstitious faiths have been eliminated. In the same way that students enter Islam, so unbelievers will come to believe. When the Mahdi appears, Allah will cause such power of vision and hearing to be manifested in believers that the Mahdi will call to the whole world from where he is, with no postman involved, and they will hear and even see him. Abu Sa'id al Qudri is quoted as saying, the Messenger of Allah said, he is one of us. The Messenger of Allah said, The Mahdi is of my lineage. He will fill the earth with fairness and justice as it was filled with oppression and injustice, and he will rule for seven years. The Messenger of Allah said, At the end of the time of my Ummah, the Mahdi will appear. 
Allah will grant him rain, the earth will bring forth its fruits, he will give a lot of money, cattle will increase and the Ummah will become great. He will rule for seven or eight years. At Tirmidhi reported that Muhammad said, The Mahdi is from my Ummah, he will be born and live to rule five or seven or nine years, if one goes to him and says, Give me a charity. He will fill one's garment with what one needs. At Tirmidhi reported that Muhammad said, The face of the Mahdi shall shine upon the surface of the moon. At Tabarani reported that, his forehead will be broad and his nose will be high, his face will shine like a star and he will have a black spot on his left cheek. Amr bin Shu'ayb reported from his grandfather that the Messenger of Allah said, In Du al Islamic month, there will be fight among the tribes, Muslim pilgrims will be looted and there will be a battle in Mina in which many people will be slain and blood will flow until it runs over the Jamaratul Aqba one of the three stone pillars at Mina. The man they seek will flee and will be found between the Rukan a corner of the Kaaba containing the black stone and the Maqam of Prophet Abraham near Kaaba. He will be forced to accept people's bayah being chosen as a leader, caliph. The number of those offering bayah will be the same as the number of the people of Badr Muslim fighters who participated in the Battle of Badr at time of Prophet Muhammad. Then, the dweller of heaven and the dweller of the earth will be pleased with him. Modern views A typical modernist in his views on the Mahdi, Abul Allah Madhudi the Pakistani Islamic revivalist, stated that the Mahdi will be a modern Islamic reformer, statesman, who will unite the Ummah and revolutionize the world according to the ideology of Islam, but will never claim to be the Mahdi, instead receiving posthumous recognition as such. Some Islamic scholars reject Mahdi doctrine, including Allama Tamana Ahmadi Allama Habibur Rahman Kanhalvi and Javed Ahmad Ghamidi Javed Ahmad Ghamidi writes in his book Mizan, besides these, the coming of the Mahdi and that of Jesus from the heavens are also regarded as signs of the Day of Judgment. I have not mentioned them. The reason is that the narratives of the coming of the Mahdi do not conform to the standards of Hadith criticism set forth by the Mahadithan. Some of them are weak and some fabricated, no doubt, some narratives, which are acceptable with regard to their chain of narration, inform us of the coming of a generous caliph, Muslim, number, 7318 however, if they are deeply deliberated upon, it becomes evident that the caliph they refer to as Umar ibn Abd al-Aziz who was the last caliph from a Sunni standpoint. This prediction of the Prophet has thus materialized in his personality, word for word. One need not wait for any other Mahdi now. Ahmed Halusi interpreted the Mahdi as a part of the inner self. Therefore, the Mahdi awakes in a person to defeat the inner Dajjal. The Mahdi stands for attaining selflessness and realizing a person's own existence as a part of God. <laughs> <laughs> Shia Islam Ahadith <laughs> 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 Muhammad is reported in Hadith to have said, The Mahdi is the protector of the knowledge, the heir to the knowledge of all the prophets, and is aware of all things. The dominion authority of the Mahdi is one of the proofs that God has created all things, these are so numerous that is, the Mahdi's proofs will overcome, will be influential, will be dominant, everyone and nobody will have any counter-proposition against him. People will flee from him the Mahdi, as sheep flee from the shepherd. Later, people will begin to look for a purifier. But since they can find none to help them but him, they will begin to run to him. When matters are entrusted to competent the Mahdi, Almighty God will raise the lowest part of the world for him, and lower the highest places. So much that he will see the whole world as if in the palm of his hand. Which of you cannot see even a single hair in the palm of his hand? In the time of the Mahdi, a Muslim in the East will be able to see his Muslim brother in the West, and he in the West will see him in the East. Muhammad al-Bakir, the fourth Ismili or fifth Twelver Imam said of the Mahdi, the master of the command was named as the Mahdi because he will dig out the Torah and other heavenly books from the cave in Antioch. He will judge among the people of the Torah according to the Torah, among the people of the Gospel according to the Gospel, among the people of the Psalms in accordance with the Psalms, among the people of the Quran in accordance with the Quran. Jafar al-Sadiq, the sixth Imam, made the following prophecies. Abu Bashir says, When I asked Imam Jafar al-Sadiq, O son of the Messenger of God, who is the Mahdi of your clan, al-Bayt? 
He replied, The Mahdi will conquer the world, at that time the world will be illuminated by the light of God, and everywhere in which those other than God are worshipped will become places where God is worshipped, and even if the polytheists do not wish it, the only faith on that day will be the religion of God. Sadir al-Sarafi says, I heard from Imam Abu Abdullah Jafar al-Sadiq that, our modest Imam, to whom this occultation belongs the Mahdi, who is deprived of and denied his rights, will move among them and wander through their markets and walk where they walk, but they will not recognize him. Abu Bashir says, I heard Imam Muhammad al-Baqr say, he said, when the Mahdi appears he will follow in the path of the Messenger of God. Only he the Mahdi, can explain the works of the Messenger of God. The face of the Mahdi shall shine upon the surface of the moon. According to Twelevers, the main goal of the Mahdi will be to establish an Islamic state and to apply Islamic laws that were revealed to Muhammad. The Mahdi is believed to be the twelfth Imam, Muhammad al-Mahdi. They believe that the twelfth Imam will return from the occultation as the Mahdi with a company of his chosen ones, and his enemies will be led by Antichrist and the Sufiani. The two armies will fight one final apocalyptic battle where the Mahdi and his forces will prevail over evil. After the Mahdi has ruled earth for a number of years, Isa will return. Topic. Quran According to some interpretations of the Quran, throughout the history of human life, the earth has never been without divine leaders and Allah has selected an appropriate man for every nation. There are two types of Quranic verses which one can find out the existence of Imam Mahdi and advent of him. One some verses show the necessity of the existence of Imam such as, you are only a warner, and there is a guide for every people 13 to 7. Imam Sadiq has said in this regard, there is a leader from our family at any time and guides people to the straight path. Two some verses give good news that the government of believers will be created, such as this verse, certainly we wrote in the Psalms, after the Torah. Indeed, my righteous servants shall inherit the earth. Topic. Doctrine regarding longevity Shia strongly believe that the prolonged lifespan of Mahdi is thoroughly justified according to rational, Quranic, traditional, research-based and historical accounts. In this regard, some reasons will be expressed. 1. The Quran includes verses that can show the Shia claim regarding the possibility of the prolonged lifespan of the Mahdi such as the 14th verse of chapter Al-Ankabit 29. In this verse, Prophet Noah invited his people to God for 950 years. Some hadiths say that he lived for 2,500 years. 25th verse of chapter Al-Kaf is the other one. This verse states that the people of the cave lived for 309 years asleep in the cave. Two narrations from Imams allege the feasibility of a long-lasting life span in humans. For instance, Shia sources have been emphasized the longevity of Qazir. Besides, the meeting of Ali and Qazir is stated in Shia sources. Topic. Twelver For Twelver Shiites, the Mahdi was born but disappeared, and would remain hidden from humanity until he reappears to bring justice to the world, a doctrine known as the occultation. For them, this hidden Imam is Muhammad al Mahdi, the twelfth Imam. According to Shia Quran commentators, implicit references to the Mahdi can be found in the Quran. Twelver Shiites, as the main branch of Shia, which consists of 85% of all Shia Muslims, claim that their twelfth Imam, Muhammad b. Al-Hasan al-Askari, who went into occultation around 256-873-874, is the promised Mahdi, who will appear before the Day of Judgment, to restore justice and equity on earth. In Shia Islam, the Mahdi is associated with the belief in the occultation, that the Mahdi is a hidden Imam, who has already been born and who will one day return alongside Jesus to fill the world with justice. The promised Mahdi, who is usually mentioned in Shia Islam by his title of Imam al-Asr the Imam of the period, and Sahib al-Zaman the Lord of the Age, is the son of the eleventh Imam. His name is the same as that of the Prophet of Islam. According to Shia Islam, Mahdi was born in Samarra in 868 and until 872 when his father was martyred, lived under his father's care and tutelage. He was hidden from public view and only a few of the elite among the Shia were able to meet him. By Shiism, belief in the Messianic Imam is not a part of their creed but it is the foundation of their creed. 
Shias believe that after the martyrdom of his father he became imam and by divine command went into occultation Thereafter he appeared only to his deputies and even then only in exceptional circumstances. In Shia's perspective, Mahdi chose as a special deputy for a time Uthman ibn Sa'id Umari, one of the companions of his father and grandfather who was his confidant and trusted friend. Through his deputy Mahdi would answer the demands and questions of the Shias. After Uthman ibn Sa'id, his son Muhammad ibn Uthman Umari was appointed the deputy of him. After the death of Muhammad ibn Uthman, Abul Qasim Husayn ibn Runabakti was the special deputy, and after his death Ali ibn Muhammad Samari was chosen for this task. A few days before the death of Ali ibn Muhammad Samari in 939 an order was issued by Mahdi stating that in six days Ali ibn Muhammad Samari would die. Henceforth the special deputation of the imam would come to an end and the major occultation would begin and would continue until the day God grants permission to the imam to manifest himself. In Shia view, the occultation of Mahdi is, therefore, divided into two parts. The first, the minor occultation which began in 872 and ended in 939, lasting about 70 years, the second, the major occultation which commenced in 939 and will continue as long as God wills it. In a hadith upon whose authenticity Shia and Sunni agree, Muhammad has said, If there were to remain in the life of the world but one day, God would prolong that day until he sends in it a man from my community and my household. His name will be the same as my name. He will fill the earth with equity and justice as it was filled with oppression and tyranny. Shias believe that the arrival of the Mahdi will be signaled by the following portents. The vast majority of people who profess to be Muslim will be so only in name despite their practice of Islamic rites, and it will be they who will make war with the Mahdi. Before his coming will come the Red Death and the White Death, killing two-thirds of the world's population. The Red Death signifies violence and the White Death is plague. One third of the world's population will die from the Red Death and the other third from the White Death. Several figures will appear, the Al-Harth, Al-Mansur, Shu'ayb bin Salah and the Sufiani. There will be a great conflict in the land of Syria, until it is destroyed. Death and fear will afflict the people of Baghdad and Iraq. A fire will appear in the sky and a redness will cover them. Shia traditions also state that the Mahdi be a young man of medium stature with a handsome face, and black hair and beard. He will not come in an odd year, will appear in Mecca between the corner of the Kaaba and the station of Abraham and people will witness him there. Ismili The Ismaili developed their own theory of the Mahdi with select Ismaili imams representing the concept of Mahdi or al-Qaim person at various times. For the sevener Ismaili, the imamate ended with Ismail ibn Jafar, whose son Muhammad ibn Ismail was the expected Mahdi that Jafar al-Sadiq had preached about. However, at this point the Ismaili imams according to the Nizari and Mustai found areas where they would be able to be safe from the recently founded Abbasid Caliphate, which had defeated and seized control from the Umayyads in 750 CE. During the period of Jafar, the Abbasid Caliphate replaced the Umayyads and began to aggressively oppose belief in an imamate. Due to strong suppression by the Abbasids, the seventh Ismaili imam, Muhammad ibn Ismail, went into a period of occultation. During this period his representative, the D, maintained the community. The names of the 8th, 9th, and 10th imams are considered by some traditions to be hidden, known only by their nicknames due to threats from the Abbasids. The 11th imam, Abdullah al-Mahdi Billah, founded the Fatimid Caliphate in 909 CE in Ifriqiya present Tunisia, ending the first occultation. In Ism Ili eyes this act again united the imamate and the caliphate in one person. The Fatimids then extended up to the central Maghreb now including Morocco, Algeria and Libya. They entered and conquered Egypt in 969 CE during the reign of the 14th Imam, al-Mu'izli din Allah, and made Cairo their capital. After the 18th Imam, al-Mustansir Billah, the Nizari sect believed that his son Nizar was his successor, while another ism Ili branch known as the Mustali from whom the Dawoodi Bora would eventually form, supported his other son, al-Mustai. The Fatimid dynasty continued with al-Mustai as both imam and caliph, and that joint position held until the 20th imam, al-Amir by Akami el-Law 
At the death of 20th Imam Amir, one branch of the Mustali faith claimed that he had transferred the imamate to his son at Tayyib Abi el Qasim, who was then two years old. Tayyib's claim to the imamate was endorsed by the Hara al Malika, the noble queen, Arwa al Salai, the queen of Yemen, who created the office of the Dai al Mitlak to administer the community in the imam's absence. Zob bin Musa D. A, CE, was the first Dai al Mitlak, and lived and died in house, Yemen. Tayyibis which include the Dawoodi Bora believe the second and current period of occultation SATR began after Imam Tayyib went into seclusion and Imam from his progeny is very much present as Mahdi on earth every time. Other sects Ahmadiyya In Ahmadiyya belief the terms Messiah and Mahdi are synonymous terms for one and the same person. Like the term Messiah which, among other meanings, in essence means being anointed by God or appointed by God the term Mahdi means guided by God, thus both imply a direct ordination or commissioning and a spiritual nurturing by God of a divinely chosen individual. According to Ahmadiyya thought the prophesied eschatological figures of Christianity and Islam, the Messiah and Mahdi, were in fact to be fulfilled in one person who was to represent all previous prophets. The prophecies concerning the Mahdi or the second coming of Jesus are seen by Ahmadis as metaphorical and subject to interpretation. It is argued that one was to be born and rise within the dispensation of Muhammad, who by virtue of his similarity and affinity with Jesus, and the similarity in nature, temperament and disposition of the people of Jesus' time and the people of the time of the Promised One the Mahdi is called by the same name. These prophecies according to Ahmadi Muslims have been fulfilled in the person of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad 1835-1908, the founder of the Ahmadiyya movement, who claimed to be divinely appointed as the second coming of Jesus and the Mahdi in 1890 around the same point in time after Muhammad as Jesus had appeared after Moses 13 centuries. Contrary to mainstream Islam, the Ahmadis do not believe that Jesus is alive in heaven, but claim that he survived the crucifixion and migrated towards the east where he died a natural death and that Ghulam Ahmad was only the promised spiritual second coming and likeness of Jesus, the promised Messiah and Mahdi. <laughs> The Madhavia sect, founded by Muhammad Janpuri commonly known as Nur Pak claimed to be the Mahdi in Mecca, in front of Kaaba between Rukan and Makam in the Hijri year 901 10th Hijri, and is revered as such by Madhavia. He was born in Janpur, travelled throughout India, Arabia and Khorasan, where he died at the town of Farah, Afghanistan at the age of 63. The Madhavi regard Janpuri as the Imam Mahdi, the Caliph of Allah and the second most important figure after the Islamic prophet Muhammad. Topic. Other religions Topic. Babi and Baha'i faiths Ali Muhammad Shirazi the 20th of October 1819 to the 9th of July 1850 claimed to be the Mahdi on the 24th of May 1844 taking the name Bab Arabic Bab English gate and thereby founding the religion of Babism He was later executed by firing squad in the town of Tabriz his remains are buried in a tomb at the Baha'i World Center in Haifa, Israel. The Bab is considered the forerunner of Baha'u'llah Arabic, Ba'al English, Glory of God, and both are considered as manifestations of God. Topic. Persons claiming to be the Mahdi The following individuals or their adherents on their behalf have claimed to be the Mahdi. The first historical reference to a movement using the name of Mahdi is al-Mukhtar's rebellion against the Umayyad Caliphate in 686 CE, almost 50 years after Muhammad's death. Al-Mukhtar claimed that Muhammad ibn al-Hanafiyyah, a son of the fourth caliph, Ali, was the Mahdi and would save the Muslim people from the rule of the Umayyads. Ibn al-Hanafiyyah himself was not actively involved in the rebellion, and when the Umayyads successfully quashed it, they left him undisturbed. Al-Hakim by Amr Allah 985-13 February 1021, founder of the Druze sect. Ibn Tumart 1082-1130, founder and religious leader of the Almohad Caliphate in Morocco and Al-Andalus Muhammad Janpuri 1443-1505, founder of the Madavi sect, see above 
Ahmed ibn Abi Mahali (1559–1613), from the south of Morocco, was a Qadian religious scholar who proclaimed himself Mahdi and led a revolution (1610–13) against the reigning Saudi dynasty. The Bab Sayyid backquote Ali Muhammad Shirazi claimed to be the Mahdi in 1844 AD in the year 1260 AH, thereby founding the religion of Babism. He was later executed by firing squad in the town of Tabriz. His remains are currently kept in a tomb at the Baha'i World Center in Haifa, Israel. The Bab is considered the forerunner of Baha'u'llah, and both are considered prophets of the Baha'i faith. The declaration by the Bab to be the Mahdi is considered by Baha'is to be the beginning of the Baha'i calendar. Muhammad Ahmad (1845–1885), a Sudanese Sufi sheikh of the Samaniya order, declared himself Mahdi in June 1881 and went on to lead a successful military campaign against the Turco-Egyptian government of Sudan. Although he died shortly after capturing the Sudanese capital, Khartoum, in 1885, the Mahdist state continued under his successor, Abdallahi ibn Muhammad, until 1898, when it fell to the British army following the Battle of Omdurman. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad claimed to be both the Mahdi and the second coming of Jesus in the late 19th century in British India and founded the Ahmadiyya religious movement in 1889. See above. Muhammad bin Abd Allah al Qahtani was proclaimed the Mahdi by his brother in law, Juhayman al Otaibi, who led over 200 militants to seize the Grand Mosque in Mecca in November 1979. The uprising was defeated after a two-week siege in which at least 300 people were killed. Muhammad ibn Abdullah al-Afta ibn Jafar al-Sadiq Musa al-Qadim according to the Waqafite Shia Muhammad ibn Qasim al-Alawi Yahya ibn Umar Muhammad ibn Ali al-Hadi Riyaz Ahmed Gohar Shahi according to Messiah Foundation International Wallace Fard Muhammad, founder of the Nation of Islam Topic. See also Topic. References Topic. Further reading Topic. Historical sources Muqaddima ibn al-Salah Sahih al-Bukhari, Dar al-Ma'arif, pp. 160–169 Jafar al Sadiq, al Gaba, The Occultation, Narrations from the Prophecies of Al Mahdi by Imam Jafar al Sadiq, Mirab Publishers, Bihar al Anwar. Topic. Modern sources Baqr al Majlisi, Muhammad, ed. 2003, Kitab al Ghaibat, com, Ansarian Publications, Doi, ARI. The Yoruba Mahdi. Journal of Religion in Africa, 4 119-136, doi, 10.1163-157006671x00070, JSTOR 1594738 Martin, Richard C., ed. 2004. Mahdi. Encyclopedia of Islam and the Muslim World, Thompson Gale, Momin, Mujin 1985, An Introduction to Shi'i Islam, New Haven, Connecticut, Yale University Press, ISBN 0-300-03531-4 Shahat Ali, Millenarian and Messianic Tendencies in Islamic Thought Lahore, Publishers United, 1993 Timothy Furnish, Holiest Wars, Islamic Mahdis, Jihad and Osama bin Laden Westport, Prager, 2005 ISBN 0 275 98383 8. Abdulaziz Hussein Sashadina, Islamic Messianism, The Idea of the Mahdi in Twelver Shi'ism, Albany, State University of New York Press, 1981. ISBN 0 87395 458 0. Sayyid Haisiam Kabani, The Approach of Armageddon, Islamic Supreme Council of America, 2002. ISBN 1-930409-20-6. Mahdi. Encyclopædia Britannica, 2008, retrieved 4 July 2010. The Golden Era of Reappearance, Association of Imam Mahdi. Topic. External links. 
Ismaili Nasus. <laughs> 